In this video, I'll show you how to bring out sky detail. Let's get started. I'm using Affinity Photo 2.2.1. Here's a photo looking out over Lake Ontario. The foreground is busy with snow fencing, while the sky is washed out, flat, and featureless by comparison. I'll balance this out by enhancing sky detail. The approach I'll demonstrate can be used for anything far off in the distance, be it mountains, buildings, trees, what have you. But of course, there has to be some detail there to begin with. If you have blown out highlights, that is areas of pure white, or blown out shadows, areas of pure black, then no detail can ever be recovered from those areas, because there isn't any. And sometimes, even with good exposure, there just isn't any detail. Dull gray skies or fog, for example. To begin, I'll use a curves adjustment. It allows for easy adjustment of highlights, midtones, and shadows, which makes it a good candidate for this sort of thing. I'll begin by bringing down the highlights. Already some detail coming through. Now I'll try the midtones. I'm focusing on the sky. I don't care about the rest of the photo. I'll fix that in a second. Adjusting midtones doesn't have much effect on the sky. Shadows probably won't either, but I'll try anyway. Nothing really. I'll play with highlights a bit more. I think this is about all I'm going to get with curves. To limit the curves adjustment to the sky, I'll apply a mask to it. It's layer selected, so I'll just click on the mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel. I'll take a black brush and paint out the curves adjustment from the foreground. I'll take a moment to zoom in and clean up the horizon line with a smaller brush. First I'll use a white brush to paint over the sky. Now a black brush to paint over the water. There's a link in the description to a video that covers masks in detail for those who are unfamiliar with them. Okay, so now the foreground is untouched and it's only the sky that's been altered. Just what I want. Next, I'll try a brightness and contrast adjustment. Lowering brightness brings out more detail. And increasing contrast does as well. I'll adjust the brightness a bit more. Definitely making progress, but now I have the same problem as with the curves adjustment. I've affected the entire photo. So now what? Do I apply a second mask to the brightness and contrast adjustment? And the same for each additional adjustment? That quickly leads to drudgery. Ideally, I would just reuse the mask I applied to the curves adjustment. Thankfully, there's an easy way to do just that. Holding down the shift key, I'll select the two adjustment layers I've added. Now from the Arrange menu, I'll select Group. The two adjustment layers have been replaced by a single layer called Group. The two layers have not disappeared, however. I'll expand the Group layer to show them. Now I can take the mask I applied to the Curves adjustment and apply it to the Group layer. The mask will then be applied to every layer contained within the Group. One mask applied to multiple layers, in other words. To do that, I'll grab the Curves Adjustment mask with the mouse and drag it over the Group layer until just the Group layer's thumbnail is highlighted and then release it, like so. I'll turn the Brightness and Contrast Adjustment layer off and on so you can see that it's now limited to the sky. I'll rename the Group to Sky Detail by double-clicking on Group and typing in the new name.
I'll leave a link in the description to a short video I made that covers working with groups in more detail. Okay, the next thing I'll try in my quest for greater sky detail is a Clarity Live filter. I'll grab it with the mouse and move it below the mask layer to avoid affecting the entire photo. For this image, moving the strength slider up to about 60% works very well. I think bringing out the white of the clouds will help, so I'll add a selective color adjustment. I'll drag it into the group and drop it below the mask layer. I'll select whites from the color dropdown. Moving the black slider over to the left makes a difference. Let's see what effect adjusting the cyan color channel will have. Moving the magenta slider to the right helps the darker clouds along the horizon stand out more. I'll try adjusting the black slider a bit. Just a little to the right works well. I'll go back to the brightness and contrast adjustments and try increasing brightness a little. All right, I think that'll do it. Looking good indeed. I'll turn the sky detail group off and on so you can see what I've done more clearly. Night and day. Impressive. Foreground and sky are now balanced in terms of detail and the photo is definitely more interesting. You can use this basic approach as a guide to bringing out distant details in your own photos. Thank you for watching.